And joining me now to discuss this is Dr. Beverly Kane, adjunct clinical assistant professor of medicine at Stanford. Thank you for joining us. Um, I want to get first your thoughts for the story you just watched. There's, there's an actual name for therapy through the connection between humans and horses it's called equine therapy. So what did you think? I've been doing this work for 20 years and every time I see a story like that, my heart just melts. Um, that, that work that um, she's doing is so important and it's something that you never take for granted. It, it, it's a magical connection between every horse and every human, which makes it a little bit hard to study scientifically because a horse is not a pill. Um, but you see the effect of the uh, physical benefits of the horse and, and the benefit to mental health. And there's not a strong division between physical health and mental health. Although for the, the sake of equine therapies, there's some division in that we have physical therapies such as therapeutic riding and equine assisted psychotherapy, which is more for mental health conditions such as one might see an office-based therapist for depression, anxiety, addictions, post-traumatic stress. And, and so you, you, you touched on some of this, but what types of conditions can equine therapy actually help as far as, being, as, far as a treatment? So I touched on the, the psychotherapies. In the physical therapy, we have therapeutic writing, which helps people uh, with neuromuscular and muscular skeletal conditions, particularly children with cerebral palsy. Mm. Um, it, it's amazing when you get a child with spastic cerebral palsy, very stiff muscles, and they get on the horse and they're all scrunched up. And after five minutes on the horse, their limbs relax and that suppleness is maintained way past the appointment. And if the therapy is sustained, then it's sustained for months and months. And that that's a pretty amazing feeling. We also treat people with multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease and Parkinson's disease and stroke. It's been helpful. And you said this is very hard to study, but why do you think this works? It works on a biological level, on a psychological level, and honestly, it works on a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. When you saw those kids talking about how they felt about those horses, then science doesn't really have a mechanism for that. I mean, you can study muscular relaxation and you can study there have been studies of bone development but the benefits are often very subjective and very personal in terms of how each person feels about the therapy and this is true whether it's physical therapy psychotherapy or even the kinds of activities that we do with corporate team building with life coaching with the course we have at Stanford that teaches medical students how to relate to patients. So it's a broad spectrum of activities, therapies, and results. Do you think they'll ever be able to, to, to quantify what they're seeing versus being able to understand what's happening? We will be able to partially quantify it, and there is some some research starting and going on using standard metric tests of psychological well-being. And in the physical therapies, you can do some tests on joint angles. But I think that there's always going to be an undefinable, unmeasurable, mm -hmm. almost magical quality to this interaction, which is which is important and which is valid and which is why people coming keep coming back for these therapies yeah, and activities. Absolutely. The power of horses, the power of equine therapy, the power of magic. Uh, Dr. Beverly came with Stanford. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Ryan.